this the season of giving, please volunteer or donate if you can. for joining us today. Our 40-year journey of joint ministry in the Salvation Army brought us to Greater Cleveland four years ago, and boy, what an adventure it's been. <laughs> it has been a privilege to serve others as we respond to human needs in this great community, community that loves their people and helps take care of it. We certainly do not do this alone. We need you, our volunteers, donors, and community partners. Speaking of volunteers, we hope that you liked that video. Is anybody ready to dance? <laughs> you can have an incredibly fun holiday by being a volunteer of the Salvation Army Bell Ringer. Throughout our program today, you will hear stories that will bring alive the Salvation Army's faith-based mission. Let your heart be touched by these life-changing stories. Today's program would not be possible without the support of our generous luncheon sponsors. The names of all the sponsors are printed in your program. And this year, we are blessed in having our very first ever presenting sponsor. We are deeply grateful to our advisory board chairman, David Strang, and the Strang family, and the Strang Corporation's support of the Army. Thank you for being our 2022 <laughs> presenting sponsor. And we thank you to all of our luncheon sponsors. Please give them a hand. Now, please feel free to enjoy your salad. The luncheon entrees will be served after the keynote address. Please join me in a word of grace. Father, we are so thankful for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to live in a country where we can freely meet, where we can freely worship you, we can freely have our free speech, we pray, Lord, that you'll bless our leaders. You'll bless us as we serve you each day. Amen. And here with me today is this beautiful lady here, Ma Mala Garb, who is a member of the Salvation Army Advisory Board and the chairman-elect. So she's going to take over for David here. We are blessed to have Mala's influence. Please greet Mala as she comes to introduce our keynote speaker. So we have to get done before the game, right? <laughs> so we won't keep you long. I'm Mala Garg, and I'm extremely honored to introduce our keynote speaker for today, Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb. I've known Mayor Bibb for many, many years, and our first meeting stands out very clearly and vividly in my mind. We were introducing our ourselves, and after a few minutes, Justin quietly and confidently said he hoped to be mayor of Cleveland next and take the city which he loves from being the last in so many areas to becoming a role model city for successful urban growth and renewal. It was a pleasure to see the focus and determination with which he drove his campaign. That same drive, vitality, and determination is what Mayor Bibb now brings to City Hall, and we all look forward to the many positive changes he plans to bring to Cleveland. I won't take the time talking about the mayor's long list of accomplishments that led to his journey to City Hall. More details on his background are in the program on your table. So please put your hands together and extend a warm welcome to our keynote speaker, the esteemed Mayor Bibb.
As Mala said, I will not be long because we have a Guardians game to watch uh, this afternoon. But it is certainly an honor and pleasure to be here today. And I want to just thank the Salvation Army for allowing me to be a keynote speaker uh, for this amazing luncheon. Another special thanks to my dear friend, uh, Mala Garg, and the Greater Cleveland Advisory Board for having me as we really reflect on the commitment and dedication of all the great work that the Salvation Army does, not just in Cleveland, but across the country. We are facing challenging times, and this organization truly is a lifeline for so many in our city. Helping Clevelanders put food on the table, secure safe housing, keep the lights on, battle addiction, and care for their families and themselves. For over 157 years, Salvation Army officers, staff, volunteers have been serving the most vulnerable in our community with open doors and open hearts, working in the spirit of God's love and helping others without discrimination. Last year alone, this organization served more than 25 million people in need across the United States. In addition to meeting those basic needs, staff and volunteers provide families with help and hope through educational support, spiritual counseling, and vocational services to help truly break the cycle of poverty. This work is so important, and few organizations have the infrastructure to meet these basic needs in our city. And as mayor, I see the need every single day. As you know, Cleveland is one of the poorest, poorest of big cities in America. And the pandemic only exacerbated the poverty and inequity that our residents experience on a daily basis in our city. And folks who were getting by prior to the pandemic were suddenly out of work, had to choose between going to work or protecting their health, had severely limited options for education and, and childcare, and the list goes on. We faced incredibly challenging times, but the Salvation Army was there, as always, in every zip code in our community, distributing food, helping families pay for utility bills, supporting their children and families as they struggle to deal with remote learning in our schools, and providing holiday assistance to help with meals and to make sure our kids can have a good holiday season. Helping each other is what makes our city great. And at City Hall, we are working urgently each and every day to address our city's greatest challenges. Our shared vision for what Cleveland can become is a safer, healthier city with great jobs, good neighborhoods, great quality health care for all of our Clevelanders. And on January 3rd, we entered office with a very clear set of priorities, to advance healthy communities and environments, to improve education and youth opportunities, to place equity in action, to promote talent and culture, to lead inclusive economic development and growth in our neighborhoods, and to finally modernize City Hall for the 21st century. We can clap for that, by the way. Working together on these priorities is how we become the Cleveland that we want to be. Now, I won't give you everything we've been up to in just a short 10 months since I took office, but I want to just give you a snapshot of some of the key progress we've made since we took office on January 3rd. When I took office, we had a vaccination rate of only 44% in the city of Cleveland. Immediately after uh, my inauguration, we formed a COVID-19 task force. And in just nine months, we've raised our vaccination rate to 58% in the city of Cleveland. Now, as we shift from a pandemic to an endemic, we will shift the priorities of our COVID-19 task force to focus on another major issue in the city of Cleveland, smoking. You may not know this, but Cleveland leads the nation with a 35% smoking rate across America, 35%. 
So we truly have to make sure we address the issue of smoking so we can truly be one of the healthiest cities in America. The other thing I want to talk about is our lead paint crisis. For far too long in this city, lead paint has been public enemy number one. And so uh, thank God we have a president who believes in changing America one city at a time because we've leveraged over $17 million from the American Rescue Plan to raise an additional $67 million from the Cleveland Clinic to make sure that no child in our city is ever poisoned by lead paint again. <laughs> the other thing I want to talk about is violent crime. As you know, uh, violent crime and public safety is and will always be my number one priority uh, as your mayor. And every mayor across the country is dealing with this systemic issue. I take this very personal. Uh, my dad was a police officer who served this community for over 30 uh, plus years. But I too have lost too many friends and family members uh, to violent crime. And so since taking office, I hired a, a brand new chief of police, Wayne Drummond. We worked directly with the ATF and the US Marshals and our governor, Governor DeWine, to cut down on violent crime. And year to date, in just nine months, every major category of violent crime is down in our city. But we know that policing is not just a solution to solving violent crime in our community. We have to do more on prevention to give young people a quality shot at life. Uh, just last week, uh, the Department of Justice awarded Cleveland a $2 million grant to fully support our violence prevention efforts across the city of Cleveland. And it shows you that our advocacy in DC is gonna pay off and keep paying golf so we can deliver every resource we can to cut down on crime in our city once and for all. The other thing that's important to note is I truly believe that this is the era of the mid-sized city. Before the pandemic, you would go to Silicon Valley or New York or Austin, Texas to create a company or get a job in the tech sector. But cities like Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Boise, Idaho, Madison, Wisconsin, they are going to lead the next era of America's economic growth story. And since the pandemic, Cleveland ranks number two, number two in America, followed by Madison, Wisconsin, for the most new tech jobs in our city around remote work. That's a positive trend. And we received over $512 million from President Biden through the American Rescue Plan to really tackle some of these big issues like broadband. Uh, and it's our intention to leverage $25 million of those investments to connect up to 50,000 households with high-speed internet. And we intend to seed a major economic down payment to raise over $5 billion over the next 10 to 15 years to bring back Cleveland's east side. Because until we have a thriving east side, we will not be a globally competitive city once and for all in our city. But this organization is all about service. And uh, as a working class kid from the southeast side, service was in my DNA. As I said before, my father was a police officer and a fireman. He did both jobs for over 35 years. He also served in the Navy as a diver in the Vietnam War. Uh, my mother, who could uh, barely read or write when she graduated from CMSD, worked her way to become a social worker. And she's been fighting and working to support our seniors all across our community for over two decades. I had no other choice but to have a life dedicated to community service. And for me, uh, this became uh, my North Star in college. Uh, I was a freshman during 9-11. I remember being in my uh, homeroom class when we saw those planes run into uh, the Twin Towers. And after 9-11, I thought my path was to go to DC, study Arabic and international relations and be a diplomat. I thought that was the best way 
to serve my country. So I get a scholarship to go to American University in DC. Uh, I barely I take Arabic and I realize this might be a little harder than I thought. <laughs> but at the same time, I was working on Capitol Hill and I got an internship to work for then uh, Senator Obama when he was in the US Senate. And uh, through that internship, I started doing community organizing in DC in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Washington, uh, Anacostia. And at the time, in 2006, Anacostia had some of the highest rates of HIV and AIDS that rivaled third world nations. It had one of the highest high school dropout rates in America. And so as I was serving with these young people who looked like me, who had the same background that I had as a working class black kid from Dove and Cleveland Southeast side, but we were a stone's throw away from the most powerful building in the world, the US Capitol. Something didn't sit right with me. And uh, over lunch, uh, talking to Senator Obama at the time, I said, uh, Senator, I'm doing this organizing in Southeast DC, but yet we're in Washington. Why do you have these problems right in our own backyard? What job should I have to make a difference? And in his very stoic cadence, he says, uh, Justin, <laughs> your aim should be to do something, not be anything. Your aim should be to do something, not be anything. Look at all the issues we're facing right now in our nation, from crime to a lack of uh, good common sense politics, where our democracy is almost at the brink of a civil war. If we all in this room, if we as elected officials just focused on doing something more than being something, I think that our world and our nation will be a lot better off. And I think we here in Cleveland have the opportunity to show America how to get it done. You know, yesterday I was in a planning session looking at um, how to really revitalize our city's lakefront. And one of the designers had this amazing quote. He said that our cities are the last best hope to restore humanity. Our cities are the last best hope to serve humanity. I think that's a big challenge, but I think together we can do it. And as your mayor, I'm gonna fight like hell to make that promise a reality. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Bibb. Aren't we fortunate to have such a great mayor? And now lunch will be served. Please enjoy your lunch and the program will begin in about 10 more minutes. If I could have your attention, please. We encourage you to continue with your lunch. And it's my privilege to greet you, just as my wife did, the better half of the Applin duo. Uh, so glad to greet you today, and thank you for being a part of our luncheon. We are absolutely blessed that after two, a two-year cessation of this annual luncheon, we're finally able to resume the in-person event. And I can't tell you how good it is for us all to be together. Aren't you glad? We're just glad that you're here and we're excited for us all to be together. As we start this part of our program today, I acknowledge that we have great strength in the advisory organizations of the Salvation Army. You'll find their names in your program today. First, I want to recognize the advisory board 
who influentially provide oversight and guidance to the Ministry of the Salvation Army of Greater Cleveland. And I'm going to ask if the members of the advisory board would stand and receive our acknowledgement today. Thank you. I would be remiss if I did not mention that we are absent five of our members who have been, as the Salvation Army describes, promoted to glory. We continue to mourn the loss of Rick Bouchard, Bob Little, Reverend Stanley Miller, Bob Nozzle, and Donald Strang, all who uh, left us uh, kind of during the pandemic. Our thoughts and our prayers go out to their families, their friends, and their loved ones, some who are here today. I also recognize the members of the Salvation Army Harbor Light Advisory Council. I'm going to ask if they will stand. They represent the extensive ministry of the Harbor Light Complex in Cleveland Center City. Thirdly, I recognize our most recent advisory board organization, Echelon. <laughs> Echelon is a new leadership group that targets a new generation of leaders who are in their 20s and 30s. Our own Echelon chapter is one of the newest and I'm proud to say strongest across the country and we're blessed in their involvement. Please welcome Echelon. Please stand. <laughs> Lastly, I acknowledge today our Salvation Army officers our Salvation Army staff who are present here today. These individuals collectively manage all of the programs and the ministry to the greater Cleveland community. They and the other employees that they, re that they represent at our facilities tirelessly touch the lives of thousands of people needing compassion, care, and provision. It's a pleasure and a joy to have the opportunity on behalf of my wife and myself to thank them for their ministry and service. As they stand, please greet these Salvation Army heroes. I can tell you firsthand, these are people who serve with love and compassion. Now in the very early days of the Salvation Army in the mid 1800s, General William Booth, who along with his wife Catherine founded the movement, often walked the streets of London where they ministered. General Booth was strongly moved with the abject poverty that caused the streets of London to be filled with people living and sleeping all day, but especially at night. He returned home and ordered his son Bramwell to go and do something. We must do something, he said. And that was the beginning of what has become the Salvation Army's commitment to service. Our theme today, serving others, is actually in the DNA of the Salvation Army. Serving others is a natural extension of our love for God. If one is going to love God, one has to love people. And to love people, you naturally have to serve them. I'm blessed today that for 157 years, now in 132 countries around the world, the Salvation Army is serving others in need. And it happens right here in Greater Cleveland, 24 hours a day, 
365 days a year, the Salvation Army serves individuals and family who either find themselves in the midst of disaster or rely on the services of the Salvation Army to keep them from falling into disaster. None of us knows when disaster might strike us. The people of Puerto Rico and the southern states, especially Florida, know this firsthand. And you'll not be surprised that the first to mobilize and to serve others in this current devastation is the Salvation Army. You've likely seen the pictures, just as I have, of the destruction left by the hurricanes. I'm blessed to tell you today that in the midst of the destruction, our Salvation Army officers and volunteers going street to street, house to house, serving and ministering to the needs of families who have lost everything. Our own Captain Stephen Thomas, the Corps Officer of the Miles Park Salvation Army Corps, is in Puerto Rico today. The Salvation Army serves others in times of disaster. And speaking of COVID, we all know how the pandemic struck, struck our world where almost everything was closed down and fear gri gripped us all, but not the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army continued to serve the most vulnerable of our community and in fact served ever, anyone who came to us in need. An incredible number of individuals and families came to our neighborhood centers for the very first time, not knowing how the pandemic would affect them. The Salvation Army serves others in the most challenging times of their lives. In your program today, you'll find a page that highlights some of the ways in which the Salvation Army serves others. Our ministry is serving men and women, boys and girls, with food and clothing and utility assistance and shelter, toys and food at Christmas, ministry and care to those in addiction and in incarceration, support and care of vulnerable seniors, and even critical care for human sexual trafficking survivors. The Salvation Army serves others by offering compassion, care, and hope in impossible situations. The Salvation Army is committed to serving others both today and tomorrow. Enough of my words. Let's listen for a moment to the voices of those we have the privilege to serve. I do have one statement I'd like to make about the Salvation Army. I think this puts it all in perspective. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. That's exactly how I feel about what you people do. So. She is definitely a great lady. She's family. They all are. As COVID came in, you know, after school programs, because school wasn't happening, um, after school programs kind of stopped. Um, and then Cleveland Public Schools reached out to programs like ours and was like, we need help. Like, we're going into this process of doing online learning but like we don't have the space to take in kids you know we can't take in you know large groups of kids help us i can't believe they do all this i'm grateful and i'm thankful for this place especially helping out they really care about the people in this community and you're 18 years old with no job you kind of lose hope. They, they gave me directions. Some of the officers they kind of feel them as parents. I wanted to be able to um, give the same thing somebody gave me. If this place wasn't here, there would be a lot of kids, teens, adults with no light, safe haven to go to, to do new programs. So I feel like this building being here is, is like 100% helpful towards the community and everybody in it. 
It was here in this exact chapel, yes. Mm -hmm. When we got married, Roger was just diagnosed with cancer. The day after? The day after. He went into a coma. Into coma. Yeah. He almost left me. they just always been there for us. I met the Salvation Army in my lowest point. I was an immigrant. In that time, I have nothing or almost nothing to give my family. They brought a, a box of food. Who helped you like that? Now I think my whole purpose in life is to help others. For those that are looking for help, I always say, hey, Salvation Army, go up there. Tell them Rosa sent you, you know? And friends, that's what serving others is all about. It's an honor and a pleasure for me today to introduce Marilyn Ruckman. Marilyn serves on our advisory board and has served alongside us for 18 years. She's a past advisory board chairman. She and her husband David are generous supporters of the Salvation Army Ministry, and Marilyn would tell you that they are all in in serving others. Marilyn's going to give you the opportunity today to serve others in a moment of giving. She has a very special message to share with you, and we pray that you'll be helpful to us. Good afternoon. Is this on? Yeah. Uh, my word for the day is grateful. And I am grateful to see you all here today to learn about the wonderful things that the Salvation Army does. Uh, having served on the board for 18 years, can't believe I've done that, um, I have learned every month from looking at the uh, financials, the money that comes in and the money that goes out. And they don't always match up too well. Um, I am grateful for the Salvation Army for providing 1,000 meals every day to the people at Harbor Light. 1,000 meals every day. Yeah. That's a lot of food, and it costs a lot of money. And I'm also grateful for the Salvation Army for providing safe, uh, comfortable housing for families and children and helping them develop some skills so that they can move out of the shelters and find their way in a better world. Uh, I'm grateful we have 34 people rescued from human trafficking and we have provided a, <laughs> thank you. Last I heard we had 14 beds and somebody told me that was the most in the whole country. Well, now we have 34 beds, and so we are providing a huge service in that area. I hope you've learned that there are so many things the Salvation Army does that is more than food and shelter. And we care for children, try to give them um, a good place to play after school, rec centers for teenagers to come and shoot baskets and, and play together and learn computer skills. That's so important. Uh, as Major Applin said, William Booth started the Salvation Army 100, over 150 years ago. And when his son told him that there were people sleeping under the bridge, he said, well, son, do something. I can't believe that the two speakers before me took that word, do something. But it's kind of a buzzword for the Salvation Army. Do something. And all of us in this room have more than we need. Probably much more than we need. And we are able to do something. So today we're going to make it easy and fun for you to do something. Uh, inside your packet, there's a donor card, 
And we, Salvation Army is right up to speed. We have a QR code. <laughs> I'm not sure, sure, sure how to use it, but most of you probably are. So if you point your phone at that QR code, you can make your donation, which will appear on the screen. Only the QR code donations will appear up there, but we will take credit cards, checks, and you can see the need is great. So we plead with you to uh, be generous. And uh, we have three donors who have given uh, matching gifts. So if you donate $1,000, your gift will be $3,000. And if you give $5,000, your gift would be $15,000. So, wow, we, our goal today is to raise $50,000 from this group in this room. And of course, as you're watching the totals come up from the QR donations, uh, you won't see che uh, checks and credit card balances, but we will give you an update at the end. You see a bell on the table, a couple bells? Well, we would like you to ring those bells whenever a donation at your table is made. So let's hear some bells. I don't hear any bells. I don't hear a single bell. Let's get them going. Okay, okay. Now, the rest of the program, uh, don't worry about interrupting anybody, whatever. If there's a donation made, you ring that bell. Because we, we really do need your help. We don't have big marketing campaigns and big PR campaigns. We don't spend our money that way. So we are asking you today to uh, be really generous. Open your hearts and your pocketbooks or your phones with that QR code and uh, help us reach that $50,000 today or more. We could take more. So I thank you for your time and your generosity. Oh, bells are ringing. Woohoo! <laughs> I want to hear I want to hear a bell at every table. I'll be very disappointed and hurt if, you, if I don't hear those bells ringing. I guess I could be fired from my job if you don't ring the bells. Woohoo! Okay. Okay, thank you. So, I would like to introduce Major Cindy Lou Drummond. She is the Divisional Commander of Northeast Ohio. Major. Thank you, Major Zaplin, for inviting me to be a part of this wonderful program. Uh, it's my privilege today to recognize uh, some award winter winners, and sometimes you don't think that people will win awards at a Salvation Army banquet or a fundraiser, but uh, we do want to recognize people that have been outstanding in their contribution to the Salvation Army and to their community and to the world. Our first award is called the Others Award. Just a little side on how that award came about. William Booth had dispensed people around the world in the early days of the Salvation Army and wanted to encourage them in the battle, in the work that they were doing. But it was very expensive to get a telegram to every person, so he was given the option to put one word, and the word he chose was others, an outstanding word to choose at the time. The Others Award honors an individual or organization that exemplifies an extraordinary spirit of service to others within their community. The Salvation Army in Greater Cleveland would like to present this award to Cabbage, Famolo, and Durkin with the prestigious Others Award. Cabbage is committed to supporting the community, and we are fortunate that the firm, through its people, supports the Salvation Army. 
The individuals mentioned reflect the firm's values and spirit of service to others. Doug De Palma is a shareholder and has served on the Salvation Army Harbor Light Council for more than 25 years. He's also been a good friend. He shares his time and talents in support of the leadership team and staff who operate a multi-service campus on 24-7 basis. Harbor Light kept its doors open during the pandemic and continues to be a beacon of hope and help to the most disenfranchised members of our community. Maddie Bell, an associate attorney, has volunteered to serve in a year-long process, which was in, in 2020, to help create an Echelon chapter in Cleveland. Yes, Echelon. Today, she serves as the Echelon board president and Maddie helps to mobilize the next generation for the Salvation Army by providing opportunities for young professionals to engage with us through fellowship and networking, donations and fundraising, and service and volunteering. Maddie uh, was our delegate to the Echelon National Symposium in 2021, where she learned more about the Salvation Army and met fellow leaders from 27 Echelon chapters across the United States. Robin Brady and Cindy Zichelli, two highly engaged employees, serve as co-leaders of a firm-wide initiative to benefit the Salvation Army. They plan fundraising activities throughout the year and use the money raised to buy toys for our annual Christmas toy drive. Their results are impressive. Year over year, Cabbage is at the top of the list of community partners in terms of the volume of toys donated each year. The Salvation Army distributes approximately 10,000 toys to families in need in Greater Cleveland, bringing joy to the 4,600 plus children receiving them. It's my pleasure to ask you to watch a video at this time. The way how I understand it growing up in the Salvation Army is that William Booth needed to send a communication and wanted to send a communication to all of the officers around the world. And the cost of doing so was so difficult. So he couldn't do a long message to all the officers and so he brought it down to one word and that one word is others. The Army does so much and, uh, and they do it, I think, quietly giving clothes to people, their coats in the winter, food all year, uh, shelter. People can show up at the Salvation Army. They don't care who you are. You know, if you need help, they're gonna find a way to help you. If they get up every day, put one foot in front of the other, and continue to try to help others the best way they can. You really, really can't put into words the value that that brings to an organization. As you work with the Army officers and you see how kind and generous they are, you get exposed to the dedicated employees, people like Bo, you know, it does make you want to be better and do more. It feels really good to be out there serving people and having that face-to-face -face interaction and it makes me feel like I'm touching people's lives, which, I mean, we're only here for a short time. You should try and do some good while you're here. <laughs> And I'm now able here at Cabot to help, you know, any way you can help out your community. You never know if it could be you or your family member in a time of need. You know if you give money to the Salvation Army or devote resources to the Salvation Army, that it is doing good. It's helping thousands and thousands of people. And it's not just helping them, but it's turning their lives around. We're blessed to have many of the people that do all the different volunteer capacities that the Salvation Army has. You know, whatever we do, it's, it's a small reflection of what I see the Army does. And if more people do a little, maybe it'll make a difference. I think you can see why we've selected Cavage, Famolo, and Durkin as our recipients of the Others Award. I'm going to ask Doug De Palma if he will come and receive the award on behalf of his firm.
You know, I was uh, told that this is one of the better attended civic luncheons. I can only assume it's because people were curious how it is that a law firm received the other award. Uh, the, uh, the short answer is through our association, long association with the Salvation Army, uh, we be we've become inspired to try to do a little bit more. Uh, and it's over the years, our different staff people and our employees and lawyers and the support of the firm have, have always been there and it's grown from year to year. But uh, as I said, we are inspired by the Army. Our hope is, is that you will be inspired uh, by the Army too. Uh, my law firm is very grateful for the uh, recognition and we're grateful to the Salvation Army. Uh, God bless the Salvation Army. You can still ring the bells. That's okay. <laughs> I'm uh, happy to introduce our next award. And this award is named after the founder of the Salvation Army. You've heard his name many times so far throughout this luncheon. It's the William Booth Award. And this award recognizes outstanding humanitarian efforts and is awarded to people who have substantial contributions to the work of the Salvation Army. The recipient of this award is actually a team of people who are uh, dedicated professionals who have given time, talent, and treasure. Dedicated leaders, doctors, nurses, translators, and volunteers. The team is known as the Salvation Army Honduras Medical Mission. When you think about a storm, you don't usually think good things, as we've experienced. But it was a storm that came that became really the perfect storm. Uh, it was Hurricane Mitch that destroyed the country of Honduras in 1998. A divisional commander at the time here in Neosa, Northeast Ohio, was Lieutenant Colonel Norman Boise, who had a vision. And the Raymond Foundation had the know-how. Dr. Russell Raymond, on behalf of the Raymond Foundation, organized a team of volunteers to make a medical mission trip to Honduras. The week-long annual mission trip started in January 1999 and continued for 22 consecutive years. From the seven Ram Raymond family members to 30 members, the vision grew over the 22 years. More than 100 medical professionals participated, mainly affiliated with our own Cleveland Clinic. The Salvation Army provided officers like Major Richard Schaffstall, who had a love for people and served as a missionary for many years in Spanish-speaking locations. The Army also provided translators, which allowed the medical professionals to do their best work with clarity. The medical team served thousands of men, women, and children in remote villages in Honduras each year. When we see, when the Salvation Army sees a storm, we see opportunity. And this was just that time. This perfect storm was the collision of a real storm, people in tremendous need, a leader's vision, a family that loved God, the Salvation Army, and servant leaders. It's my pleasure to invite you to watch a video. In 1998, October, when Hurricane Mitch came through and just d destroyed the, the country, the head of the Salvation Army in Cleveland, Colonel Norman Voise, was a, a friend of ours and had kind of grown up with my older brothers. And they knew that four of us at the time were physicians and uh, said, you know, um, we'd like to send you to Honduras just to see what you could do, you know, if you could just help a little bit. So we went on down there with the medicine that we could accumulate in such a short time. We took a lot of uh, antibiotics and analgesics and uh, Tylenol, etc. 
everything was brown. When you looked down, flying in, everything was brown. All the green had been washed away or blown away. I remember him saying to me, how do I get rid of the noise in my head? He said, the cries of the people being carried out to sea from the floodwaters. And when you get down there, you realize, you know, okay, we got all these supplies and everything, but the, the most important thing is we are here to just help people. When you go there, you see a different face of humanity. It's very clear that they need our help and that they don't have access to good medical care there. There would be 200, 250 people waiting when we would arrive at about 8, 8.30 in the morning. People would come from miles and miles. What really brings us to work every day is helping people. And when we go to Honduras, it's clear and it's evident that's what we're there for. When you're all in, of one mind and in one accord, so to speak, um, it becomes a very powerful tool um, that impacts people. So I, I, I think it's not only physical, medical, you know, it, there's a huge spiritual component to it also. Each one of them, each one of the doctors and nurses took the time to see not the patient, to see the person. And for me, I think that was a great opportunity to, to go there and help people and be able to, to be like that bridge between the, the people of Honduras and the doctors. The Army is living out its mission of heart to God, hand to man, you know, um, and get, get your boots dirty on the ground where you are, no matter where that is. What kept me coming back on the trip was the success of the trips, the good that we did. Um, I think a lot of patients lives were changed because of our trips. Moving forward, I remember my dad talking about working with the Army Corps of Engineers, building bridges, planting trees, um, and you know, having volunteers locally to participate in all of that. So it became exciting to learn that the country was evolving and, and trying to take care of the people that lived there. You know, truly amazing that Dr. Raymond was able to start this and continue it for two decades. Just the energy and the devotion that he had towards this effort is, is, is amazing. We're, we're trained to treat diseases and help folks, but we can't do that without the undergirding of an organization like the Salvation Army. I just could not believe the reach the Salvation Army gave us on these trips and the impact that it had. We are definitely an international movement. The Cleveland Clinic allowed me to bring up uh, two children per year. The most recent uh, patient we brought up was a 20-year-old uh, gentleman, uh, Daniel. He, he would develop tremendous and long-lasting palpitations that would really take him to his knees sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you feel like everything is lost and there's always someone or something that is like a second chance, like, a, like an angel for you. So do not give up. My goal is to uh, exercise. You know, I haven't been able to exercise like in my whole life. I just have thankful words. I really appreciate all the help that they have given me. Everybody knows someone that needs another person to help us. The good Lord gave us all talents, and maybe your talent is time, and maybe your talent is prayer, maybe it's cooking, or maybe you've got money. Whatever your talent is, you need to use that. In the Salvation Army, you've got to really be dedicated and love the Lord and, and, and use that love to help others. We're grateful to the uh, Honduras medical team for responding to William Booth's call of doing something. On behalf of the team, I'm asked Dr. Russell Raymond to accept this award. Please greet him.
Thank you so much. It's wonderful to see a couple of patients of mine, by the way. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a great surprise. Um, I, I wanted to add one thing uh, to the video. Um, Daniel was the only adult we brought up. All the others were children less than 18 months of old with congenital heart disease. And the Raymond Foundation would pay $10,000, but the Cleveland Clinic pro bono the remainder. And uh, they've been a wonderful partner of ours. Um, Major Drummond and the selection committee and the, the advisory board, uh, thank you so much. On behalf of uh, probably more than a little hundred volunteers uh, throughout the 22 years, uh, we thank you. And this award means so much. Um, I would like to also be uh, reminded, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my wife for her patience. <laughs> Every November, every November and December, and when I'd come home from the hospital, I'd spend a couple hours on the computer. Now, what, what physicians do I need this year? You know, ER, family medicine, dermatology. And um, uh, she was so patient with me. Um, there are two additional members of the first team here. My brother, uh, Norm, retired OBGYN, and his uh, wife, Jackie, a uh, nurse. Would you stand up, uh, Norm, Jack? And um, anyone else who has been uh, a physician, a nurse, a helper, a Salvation Army translator, would you also stand up and be recognized? Excellent. Thank you. Um, just last week, I received an email from Daniel. Um, he happened to be here, actually, when this video was being produced, and, and uh, it was uh, wonderful timing. So I'd like to, I've been asked to actually read the email in follow-up to his visit here. He had a syndrome called WPW, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, where there's what we call an extra pathway in the heart, so that the heart rate would go from 70 to 180, uh, 190, and that's why he couldn't exercise, because exercise would provoke this. Um, he says, Dear Dr. Raymond, it's so nice to reach you out again. Uh, I hope you're doing great. This is just to let you know I'm doing fine since my second and successful surgery. I have done so many things, such as exercising. I got in a soccer team, and I also got a new job in a radio station. I think the interview with the Salvation Army inspired me too. This is a brand new chapter in my life, and I want to thank you and the Cleveland Clinic for all your help. This wouldn't be possible without you and the team. My mom also says hi. She's thankful, as am I. Thanks so much. May God bless you. Please let me know how you are doing. Sincerely, Daniel. So, you know, in summary, um, I, I want to say in summary that this all would not have been possible were it not for the Salvation Army's initial invitation and continued support throughout the years. Selfless giving of our medical team and translators and subsequent partnering with the Cleveland Clinic. Thank you, Major. God bless our award winners. They're wonderful people. And now I would like to introduce, once again, Majors Tom and Kathy Applin, our Greater Cleveland Area Commanders. Wow, it's been a great afternoon, hasn't it? I hope you've enjoyed your time. We want to say thank you once again. This has been great, and it's only because of you that this has been great. But we have one final visit video that we don't want you to miss. So make sure you stay in your seats. I'm pleased to tell you that so far we've raised over $20,000 in the room today.
But forgive me for being so bold as to say there's no reason why it can't be 50. <laughs> there are individuals in the room today who could make a gift, significant gift, and get us to the 50,000. Um, maybe take us over. And if, uh, if you're so led today to want to serve others in this fashion, ring the bells. We certainly can use it. We'll post our final total on our website, clevelandsalvationarmy.org, the first of the week, and you can go and look and see how we finally did. One final challenge. Consider the Salvation Army as a volunteer activity this holiday season. Please leave us your contact information on your table on the response card and tell us that you'll be a volunteer bell ringer this Christmas season. Please take a bell with you if you do. And also we want to share that the mums that are on your table today can become a means by which you do something good for others. Someone can take the mum with them today and use it as an opportunity to serve others by gifting it to someone who needs some encouragement. And now we have one last video, but don't forget about our first video. If you want to be a bell ringer and you want to get out there and do a little dancing, I know some of you do, we'd be glad to have you this holiday season. Please watch the video. They're feisty, fun, and forever proud to call Cleveland home. You're watching Cribs in the CLE. You're gonna such an amazing city. Yes, so beautiful do. outside. It was it's so hard. Absolutely, oh, I got goodness. to ride the bike. Good time to be. And I was working out. Mayor, they're gonna have What's going on? <gasps> mayor, Mayor, Cleveland. How y'all doing? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you, brother. I'm good. I've been awesome. Nice to see you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Man, what do we owe this pleasure? Well, I, I just got back from the Salvation Army Civic Luncheon. Oh, wow. Okay. It was a great event. Oh, and uh, I dropped by to tell you some important news. Oh my gosh, he's gonna make you know, it. You can't have my job. Oh, oh, oh. Not okay, 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 okay. But you're up next to co-host next year. Don't fumble the ball, brother. All right. You sure? All right. All right. I, I got some more potholes to fill, but okay, you're busy, man. You're busy, man. I'll see y'all next year. Oh, oh, uh, all right. Good to see you. It's me. It's happening. It's happening. What's happening? I'm transcending. Transcending? I, I wore white for this. He's taking Oh, my gosh. I knew I was going to. I was ready for this. Mm -hmm. It's my moment. The 2023 Civic Luncheon Salvation Army. I'm up next. Oh, my gosh. I'm gonna do a great job. Yes, we are blessed that next year, same time, same channel, Josh and Maria will be our hosts for the annual luncheon. And uh, by the way, Marie is a great dancer. Yes, she is. <laughs> we'll get you out on that kettle. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for coming today. Join us next year. But most importantly, go out and share with others. Make a difference in the world and do something. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so excited for next season. I say season, next year. <laughs> what in the world? It's not football. It's not football. OK, thank you for that. Um, but uh, being so inspired here today, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed myself. And you know, I feel like we're in a, an elite position you know, where we're like an army of angels. You know, and I know we say Salvation Army. But the work that the Salvation Army does, it so inspires me that I feel like we are all grateful. We all have an opportunity to do more, 
to, to act right now and to be a, a true angel of an army of angels. That's right. And that's who we are and that's who we represent. I can't wait for next year. <laughs> and we're gonna raise the, I'm not in uh, I'm not in competition with the mayor, but I'm gonna come with a whole lot of hoopla. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it big next year for a great cause. Oh yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and we appreciate your generosity in sharing with the Salvation Army. Have a great day.